Good day, ladies and gentlemen. The subject today of this YouTube video is grizzly bears. Now, a few years back, I made a video on the subject of grizzly bears up here in Montana, and that and that was one video that I wish to God and Sonny Jesus that I never made because I never got so much flack in all my life. Now, pay attention to me. I was born in this state in 1951, and I've known at least a hundred people that have got torn from limb to limb by these animals called silver tip grizzly bears, and we have them in the state of Montana. Make no mistake about it. But we'll we'll get into more of this subject as I go along here. I've got three firearms, and I use firearms for grizzly bear protection. And no, I do not hunt grizzly bears. I don't hunt black bears. As a matter of fact, I don't even like grizzly bear meat. I, I don't mean grizzly bear meat, but bear meat because it's fatty and greasy and all this other stuff. I've got a spiritual agreement with these grizzly bears. They don't bother me. I won't bother them. But if they bother me, I'm going to get a lot of lead in the air in a quick hurry. Now, I carry a survival pack with me at all times when I'm out in the field. And basically what I pack is a Glock 20. Now what a Glock 20 is, it's a 40 caliber Magnum. It's a 10 millimeter auto, okay? There's a round that this doggone thing shoots, and this is our 15 round clips, 200 grain rounds, because if you're going to stop those animals, you don't need a BB gun or anything like that. Okay. Now I pack a Glock because it's lightweight, and it's very easy to very easy to pack. It's lightweight. Most of the firearm is made out of uh, a polymer or like that. Okay. Second piece that I purposely bought for grizzly bear protection is a Benelli 12 gauge shotgun. Now this guy here can shoot two and three quarter inch rounds, uh, three inch shotgun shells, and three and a half inch magnums. And this is a tactical Benelli. It does have the military sights on it, and whatever have you. 12 gauge shotgun is uh, 72 caliber, okay? You need big heavy lead in order to stop them animals because they're big and powerful. Now, what I like to do is I stagger rounds. This right here is a one inch rifled slug. I'll put in a one inch rifle slug and then I like to use bird shot, number three bird shot. So every other round is a slug and bird shot, slug and bird shot. That particular piece right there only holds five rounds, but so be it. Okay. The third piece that I got here, this is a 450 Marlin. This is the smallest of the 458 Magnums. This is a, a belted Magnum. Here's the round. This is a Hornady round. It's uh, uh, 325 grains. I do have some 350 grains. Uh, for the most part, this is a 4570 government. It's a modern version of the 4570 government round, okay? So I've got that. And you're probably asking, what do you need all them firearms for? What about my wife back at camp while I'm off fishing and hunting? You gotta stop and think about it. Okay. Now, right off the get-go, basically what I do up here in Montana, and there isn't a game warden around that's gonna argue with me about this. If I even remotely think that there's a grizzly bear around, or I'm in grizzly bear country, you know what I do? I leave. I get gone because I am intruding on that boar's domain or that sow's domain. You know, it's not like they're in my living room. I'm in their living room. Okay? And like I say, I don't purposely go out of my way to shoot grizzly bears or harm bears. I don't even hunt black bears. Okay, getting into other protection. I don't even own that stupid bear pepper spray or whatever have you. I call it Jesus in a can. 
that's supposed to be funny. Jesus in a can. Now, I just got, this is some gun wash here, but if you think you're going to stop a grizzly bear with a little can of pepper spray, you're sorely mistaken. But if you, if you refuse to pack a firearm, you don't own a firearm or whatever have you, we'll give you some pepper spray. But my problem is, what happens if the wind is blowing in the wrong direction? I know a guy up in West Yellowstone that got mauled pretty bad because he tried to use some pepper spray, Jesus in a can, if you will, and the wind was blowing the wrong way. The pepper spray blew back in his face, and he was screwed, okay? But here's what you do. The simple fact of the matter is, grizzly bears, how do I put this? They don't attack people to eat ya, okay? You as a human being are in their living room and you're posing a threat to them, especially if you surprise them. So it's a good idea if you're hiking up here to carry a whistle, make some noise, tie some tinkerbells on your Nikes, or whatever have you, right out the get-go. Because those grizzly bears, they do not like to be surprised. Okay, now say you're camping. One of the worst things that you can do is leave a bunch of food laying around. Empty beer cans, eggshells, coffee grounds, any of this kind of stuff. You need to keep all food substances put away in airtight containers. Because a bear can smell food in human beings for in excess of one mile, and that is the gospel. The thing with a grizzly bear is, is, is they're mostly a browsing animal, a grazing animal. They like to run around. They like to lift up logs and look for insects. They roll over rocks. I know, I've seen the sign many, many times. Uh, by the way, bear droppings is called bear scat. Kind of looks like somebody that's had diarrhea. <laughs> you know, it looks like a small uh, cow pie, if you will, and it's generally pure black and it's got a lot of seeds in it. They're a foraging type animal. Basically, a grizzly bear is a vegetarian, but however, if they get hungry enough, they will eat carrion, roadkill, and stuff like that. So you got to be aware of the fact that their noses is very keen. They don't have the greatest eyesight in the world, but their hearing is very good, very excellent. Okay, uh, say you don't have anything. Say you don't have any Jesus in a can. Say you don't have a firearm or you don't believe in firearms. Let me stop here for a second. Well, I'm thinking about firearms. Nobody's taking my firearms away from me. None of you politicians. I dislike you people. I'm a Vietnam veteran and I have earned the right to pack and bear firearms. But let's say you're in a situation where you encounter a grizzly bear and you're pretty sure that you're going to get attacked. The best thing that you can do is lay, just drop to the earth, drop to the ground Assume the fetal position. Draw your legs up. Wrap your, you know, well, you can kind of cover your head if you want to, but get in the fetal position and don't move. Whatever you do, don't move a muscle. That bear may come and bat you around a little bit and sniff on you and whatnot have you, but generally it'll leave you alone, especially if it doesn't think that you're posing a threat. And that's another thing. If you encounter a grizzly bear, and that grizzly bear is on the fight because they're very temperamental and you never know what they're going to do, and and you get real paranoid and you start book, bootlegging down the trail, that is another thing that you should not do. Never try to run away from a grizzly bear because chances are, especially if it's a, a sow with a cub, she is going to run you down. Because them grizzly bears have been clocked at 35 miles an hour. They, they, they have a tremendous burst of speed, but thank God they can only run that fast, if you will, up to about 100, 150 yards. So, basically,
basically speaking, when you come up here in these woods of Montana, if you're going to do this alpine hiking and stuff like that, my very best advice is to be aware of the fact that these bears are here and they're nothing like a black bear. Black bears, I've been around them a lot. They're very timid. They generally don't even like human beings. They'll run the other way, but a grizzly bear will run from nothing. There are, the reason why I flashed them firearms at, right at this camera here, because that's about the only thing that I'm aware of that'll stop them. Plain and simple, you need some big, heavy firepower to get, to get the job done. So, like I say, keep your food buttoned up, keep your wits about you, but the very best thing that you can do if you think you're in grizzly bear country or you run across them tracks and that bear scat is get gone because grizzly bears have claws that are four inches long. It's, uh, you, might as well, you might as well say they're packing 20 knives. These animals range anywhere from six to 800 pounds, and they're nothing but pure muscle because they dig and run around a lot looking for insects, ants, berries, and whatnot have you. And their, mu their muscles and their shoulders and the front part of them are very, very powerful. They can bring down a horse or an elk with one swipe. Like I say, these animals are nothing to fool with, and we do have them in the state of Montana. You need to respect them, and you need to give them a wide, wide berth. I was born in this state. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So, please be careful out there, and thank you very much for watching the video.